So guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about expensive versus cheap knives. Let's get into this. So guys, as I mentioned in the intro, today I'm going to be talking about expensive versus inexpensive knives. And for the lineup today, I have the Pull Force Prepper one, the Pull Force November one, the Pull Force, just kidding, this is a cold steel, Roach Belly, and the Mora Companion. I only have two Pull Forces. But anyways, uh, Harry, today I'm going to be comparing these expensive $300 knives versus these sub $10 knives. So this is truly both sides of the spectrum. So for any of those guys who say that the Mora Garberg, like $60 knife is expensive, you'll probably want to leave this video right about now because these are actually expensive knives. So anyways, now to get into what you can expect with a cheaper and a more a little while knife. back i did a axe cheap versus expensive axe comparison video and this is going to be rather similar in principle to that video because a lot of the principles are very similar when you begin to look at it and while cheap knives are very good and overall they are pretty comparable to a cheaper axe the one big difference between the cheaper axe and the cheaper knife is with the axe you can actually like replace the handle which drastically changes the ergonomics and you can improve it in that way you can also generally you know contour the grinds and make the axe really the way you want to you have to do more work as opposed to just buying a gba where all the work is done but you can actually change a budget axe to make it <clears throat> make it a lot like a more expensive axe whereas with these knives you can do some modification there's really not much you can do so once you buy one of these cheaper knives you're kind of stuck with it but the same can be said about these more expensive knives they're just more squared away generally so that being said one of the biggest differences between an expensive and cheaper knife is something that i brought up with the axes and that is that if you kind of imagine it in this way this is how i like to think about it is if tomorrow everyone that knew anything or really anything about knives like designs and you know like how to actually make them slash all the knives in the world just disappeared you know they were no longer there but all the world was left with was blueprints of these knives this is pretty much what you would get and why i say this is because these knives are made by people who don't really use knives they don't fully understand how a knife works unlike these knives that are made by users the people who make these knives highly likely get out and actually use these knives and other knives same with their designers not to say that the designers of these don't but the designer and the builder of these knives are often very far separated whereas with these knives more expensive knives in general the maker and the designer can actually be one in the same or extremely close where the designer has direct input and can veto these knives so if the designer ends up not liking this knife he can just say chuck it out and that's what happens whereas with these knives like i said the designer and the actual crafter of these knives are quite far removed so with these knives you get you know lower quality steel and you know while the ergonomics feel pretty good and certainly with this one it's good enough but there it is lacking especially after you hold like if you do a direct comparison of holding this prepper one and then you hold this knife there is a lot lacking <laughs> make no mistakes there is a lot lacking in the ergonomics you know in the thickness overall this knife you know it cannot match this knife and <clears throat> same with this knife you know and once again it reminds me so much of if people just had blueprints you know they cut jimping into this knife but the jimping is really sharp and for the most part pretty actually unusable whereas with this knife you know this was made by someone who knew what good jimping felt like so you can see that it actually grabs the skin but not so aggressively that it's painful you know at least in the beginning you know it does eventually get painful but it's not painful in the beginning and it actually grabs the skin to hold the actual knife in your hand even more but at the same time the jimping is placed in such a way that you can easily override the jimping so in those situations where you don't want to be on jimping you can put your thumb right here as opposed to back here and as well the jimping is actually 
kind of lowered in a way that when you hold it, even up here where I'm technically on the jimping, it's not actually interfering with my grip at all. So these are the kinds of things that go back to the fact that these people who made these two knives know what a knife should feel like and how a knife should work. They have some idea of design and that's really important. And overall, you know, that leads to a better experience with those knives. Uh, another really good illustration I'm gonna show you of these people knowing what is right and proper with a knife is I'm gonna show you, and hopefully this comes out well, I'm gonna try and show you guys in here. Uh, you guys will notice probably that there is this weird texture. It's more reflective than the Kydex in there, and that is felt. So there's the inside of this Kydex sheath is actually felt lined, and there's a couple reasons you wanna do that. One, that this edge, it's already polished, uh, not super polished, but it is pretty polished, as you guys can kind of see in that reflection, and you can get it even more polished. And one thing is Kydex will scratch the polished steel, if you guys don't know that. That is something that happens. So in order to protect polish or the polished steel, you use a felt line to give it some softness in there so that you don't ruin your polished edge. Secondly, as well, if you want to be all tactical, it also helps because it's a very quiet deployment or deployment slash putting it back in. So if you guys can hear, I'm not sure how well you can hear this, but you probably can't hear it very well, but that's because even I'm just kind of rattling it back and forth. Hopefully you guys can see here, you know, I'm rattling it back and forth and there's practically no noise in that except for when it closes. And that's part of the reason why you might want a felt lined uh, tied at sheath is it helps for a quieter deployment slash putting it back in. So the thoughts that ultimately go through these people's minds, they think of how can we make this knife really user friendly? How can we make the user better prepared with our knives? Using their understanding through likely decades of having used outdoor knives, they can apply these little things that actually have a very big impact. I am often reminded of like with the GBA, how it has ears on the ax head as opposed to the Cold Steel Trail Boss that didn't. And while ears are absolutely unnecessary for the use of an ax, just like the felt lining in the sheath, what it helps the ax handle to do is have a longer life because there's more uh, contact between that ax head and that ax handle. And with this, it'll help your polishes have a longer life because it won't scratch them. And so that is a really nice thing. Once again, it's those small little touches that really can make a large deal. And it shows that the people here not only know what they're doing, but they want to help appreciate you and your work. You know, if you put a nice handle on that axe, they don't want that axe to just, you know, or that axe handle to just break off. Or if you put a beautiful polish on this, they don't want that polish to just get scratched. Uh, so anyways, those are some, that is probably the largest reason why a expensive knife is so expensive. Secondly, once again, you, when you fund these knives too, something that I love, and this is more kind of getting into mindset or theology or how you want to see it uh, in the world, but when you support these people who make these types of knives or more expensive knives, you're actually supporting people who are in the knife culture. They're actually makers who you know really appreciate knives, they're learning how to make knives, they're trying to overall better the knife community. Whereas when you buy knives like these, you're funding essentially sweatshop workers that work for pennies. So not so much with this one because this one's produced at a first class world, but this one that was made in Taiwan, you know, it gets a little bit more sketchy. And especially any knives made in China, you really just don't know, regardless to what a company says, companies can lie so you know you're pretty much funding sweatshop workers so once again you know that is something that I hate to do because I would never want to work in a sweatshop and so I wouldn't want to promote anyone else working in a sweatshop but that is something that naturally you happen to do by supporting cheaper knives another thing I do want to kind of address here is to those people who want these more expensive knives, you know, really how to get them. And this is my strategy on how to get more expensive knives. Uh, you know, got like my Bark River Aurora was I worked really, really hard. This was like back when I was 14 ish. You know, I worked really hard and I saved money because I saw, you know, I could buy a lot of these cheaper knives here, but I really was dead set. My goal was to get that more expensive knife. And, you know, if you just hold off and, you know, you can buy like 10 or 18 Moras for the price of the Bark River that I bought. 
considering that these are like 10 bucks. So for the Aurora I got for 180, you could buy 18 of these. So you could buy a lot of cheaper knives, but they just can't compare. Ultimately, if you have 18 companions, you know, they will never be able to compare to the one Bark River Aurora, which I don't like the Aurora so much anymore, but the Bushcrafter that I now have was the Aurora. Anyways, long story, but you know, save up your money and really, you know, set up, be very goal oriented when getting more expensive knives. And you'll find that you really can achieve these 300 or $400 knives. You know, just set aside money, you know, make sure to get to like a lack of confidence. Just remember that it really will be worth it because I'm here to tell you, you can buy a lot of cheap folders, but nothing feels, or all those cheap folders, even if you have like four or five of them, they don't feel as good as the one CRK Sabenza. You know, this the Sabenza is really awesome. So if you want one, save up for it and get it. Uh, and don't just buy more cheaper knives because I often see that in a lot of people you know they they buy a whole bunch of these knives and it's like you know if you would have saved your money instead of buying four or five of these cheaper knives you could have just gone for you know the CRK Sabenza or a Pole Force Prepper one you could go for these more expensive knives if you just saved up instead of buying the cheaper ones so anyways that's my partial rant on ethics and on saving up to get more expensive knives hopefully you've enjoyed this lively comparison of you know expensive knives versus cheap knives once again these are not bad and i would encourage cheaper knives if you're just looking at getting into bushcraft if you're not sure you want to really become a bushcrafter then that's when you begin to consider getting these knives but what i'm talking about is if you've been a bushcrafter for like one or two years this is something that you really genuinely like you really owe it to yourself to save up for these really nice knives because i'm here to tell you they will make your bushcrafting experience and outings a lot better and if you don't believe me go talk to anyone that has an adventure sworn or a brk or BRKT, sorry, um, or I guess they call themselves BRK now, uh, but BRK or, you know, pull forces. I'm lucky that I've had quite a few expensive knives and still do. So, you know, even I can say it's very well worth it. And these knives perform far superior to even hundred dollar knives. So really go and save up and get one of these. So anyways, not trying to sell a particular brand here. If you like Pole Force, I've done reviews on BRKs, Pole Forces, you know, you choose what brand you really want, but uh, you know, try and get a more expensive knife because honestly, you will be impressed by them. And they're honestly a knife that not only can you pass down to your children, hopefully that you have, but you can also sit there, you know, at like 12 o'clock at night and just admire this knife. You know, it's a knife that you can really look at. You can admire, I mean, like those little things like the felt and the kydex, you know. You can admire the beautiful work of this handle. I mean, this handle has so many different curves to it and so many little grooves. It's a really beautiful handle. You know, you can admire the grind on this, you know. Everything, you can just sit there and look at this knife and be like, wow, that's a really great knife. And that's not necessarily something that you can do or want to do with Amora. So anyways, guys, that's been my rant and kind of explanation on expensive knives versus cheap knives and what you can expect to get, especially with more expensive knives. And uh, that's it. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out.